Hello and welcome to part 5 of our tower defense series. Now in the last episode we created this tower to strike hell and fury upon our enemies. But in this episode what we really want to be able to do is want to be able to place this tower down ourselves rather than just sort of having a position at the start of the game. Now this is a bit of a complicated process but we're going to take things steady and walk through things nice and it slowly. So we're going to stop the game. And we're actually going to need to add in a, another local script. So we had to start a player and start a player script. You might remember we created this local script for the mob animations. So we're going to create another local script. And we're just going to name this... Um, mm -mm. Let's just name this game controller, possibly. Uh, maybe we'll rename that later. And what we want to do is we want to get the position of the player's mouse, okay? That's the first step, is finding out where the mouse is on the screen. Right, we want to be able to know where it is, and then eventually, what it's actually touching. So in this case, obviously, I'm hovering over this tower. So in our game control script, in order to get the mouse, we're going to need something, service, called user input service. So create a variable for that, and we set that equal to that service. User input service, there we go. And then we can get the mouse position. So local mouse position. And that's equal to, we use the service and we call the function get mouse location. Where is it? Get mouse location. There we go. And that gives us an X and a Y value. So how about we just uh, test this out? So task.wait, we'll wait three seconds. And then we're just going to print out wherever the mouse is on screen at that time. So if I play, after three seconds, it's then going to tell me where the mouse is. It's sort of in the top right corner. There we go. So we've got 956328. And rather than doing it just the one time, well, we could wrap this in a bit of a loop so we can sort of see it happening. So we could say, while true, do. And then we could move this into a loop. And we could just add a short wait each time. That's dot wait. Right, just the minimal amount, just one frame. And so now if we play, we should get a better idea of where the mouse is moving. So you can see if it's in the top right, the numbers are going to be high for the X value. We've got 1, 4, 8, 9, and 12. If I move it down right to the bottom, then we're going to get the biggest numbers there. We've got 655 for the Y. And move to the top left, I'm going to get 0 for both of them as well. There we go. Now you'll notice there's only two values here, an X and a Y. There isn't a Z value. Because the mouse only exists in 2D space. I can move it left, right, up and down. But I can't move it forwards and backwards. Although it might sort of give the appearance of that when I select different things in the game. The mouse itself isn't actually zooming in and out, is it? It's only staying pretty stationary. So in order to translate the 2D position of the mouse into the 3D game world... What we need to do is we need to do something called ray casting. So we're going to cast a ray. Think of it as like drawing an imaginary line from a 2D position down onto the 3D world. Now you could use ray casting for lots of things in the game, sort of between objects, between enemies, if they wanted to calculate line of sight. Um, but we're going to use it for our mouse. Now, the mouse doesn't have a 3D position, but something that does have a 3D position is the camera. We can move the camera around the world. So the camera does have a 3D position. So in our local script, we're going to need to get the camera. So local camera equals workspace dot current camera. And then we can start to create something called a mouse ray. So local mouse ray this is a new variable and this is going to be equal to camera call a function on it called viewport point to ray now we can see that you need to give it an x value and a y value don't worry about the depth for now and so those x and y values we're going to give it is the position of our mouse so we'd say mouse position dot x comma, mouse position dot y. And then now what we could do is we could print out our 
mouse ray. So let's just uh, let's wait a few seconds and then we'll do it again like we did before. We're going to wait three seconds, get the mouse position, and then we're going to get the mouse ray. So I'll click play. I have the mouse somewhere over the right, and we'll wait three seconds, and there we go. Got that information in the output. So we can see at the top here is the X and Y, the 2D position of the mouse. And then below here, we've got two vector values, right? So it's an X, Y, and a Z value. And then this one is the, I think that's the normal vector, right? Or the direction of the vector, I think is the accurate term for it, but don't worry about it. <laughs> it's telling us where our position is in 3D space. So where our camera is, and then where this mouse is pointing to. So now we've got this mouse ray, we can actually make a ray cast and see what that ray is hitting. So local ray cast result, and we set this equal to, and we can actually use a function of the workspace, workspace colon ray cast. And we can see ray cast takes a few parameters, the origin, and a direction and some optional raycast parameters. So the origin, well, we can get that from our mouse ray. That's actually this vector we see right here. So mouse ray dot origin. And then next up is the direction, which is this vector we see on the right. So mouse ray dot direction. And then we actually need to uh, multiply this by how far we want the ray to go. Because by default, this is just kind of going sort of like zero studs, if that makes any sense. So we need to multiply it by how far we want to travel, how far we want to look for something to hit. And let's just do this times 100, 1000. How about that? So if we don't hit something after 1000 studs, then we'll just return nil. So then at the bottom, we can print out now the Raycast result. So let's play here again. Move my pointer over onto the tower. I'm going to wait three seconds and there we go. So now if you look in the output, we've got a 2D position of the mouse again. That mouse ray we created. And then finally, if I scroll down a bit more, you'll see this Raycast result object. And it says tower because it's got the name of the, the instance of the thing that we hit. And it's got some information about it, its position, its material, its brick, and so on. So let's hit stop. So now we've got all this information about what our mouse is interacting with in the world. We can start to put some of this to use. So let's, instead of just doing this the one time, let's wrap this in a function now. So local function. I will call this mouse raycast. And then we can put all of this in here. Control X, Control V. And then we will just return the value of the raycast result. And we don't really need to print all of these out anymore. So we can comment these out or you can delete these. It's up to you. But once they're commented out, they're not going to do anything. So that's our function. And then how about we really want to be checking where the mouse's position is all the time. You don't just want to check once, obviously. So in order to have something happen every single frame, we we'll need to use something called run service. So we we'll create a variable for our service, run service equals game get service run service. There we go. And now we can use a function of the run service called dot render step connect it to a function. There we go. Because we're now returning it, we set a variable for it, local result equals whatever this function returns. Again, it might just be nil, I mean, like when we're doing our tower. And then we'll check if there is a result, if we hit something, and the result returns an instant. If it returns a part, then we're going to print out Result dot instance dot name. So the name of whatever part we hit. Click play here one more time. And 
at the moment I've got my mouse pointed up to the sky, so it's not actually going to do anything. But then if I move my mouse up to or down to the base plate, there we go, you can see I'm hitting the base plate and that's being updated every frame, so it's spamming it into the output. If I move it onto this piece of grass, there we go, we can see grass now in the output. Move it onto my body, I can get handle, left upper arm, left lower arm, left hand, get my different body parts. I can get leaves on this tree. Move it onto the tower, say tower, and we can move it onto the different mobs and so on. And so we can now work out what we're actually interacting with within the world. Okay, so now that we've got our mouse detection working, how about we respond to some mouse clicks? So in order to do that, we can actually use this user input service that we've already got. And just after our mouse raycast function, we'll add a new line. So we'll call the user input service and we're going to use an event called input began and we'll connect that to a function much like we did uh, down below here with one service we get an event and then we connect it into a function and what I'd like to do is when I click I would like to be able to interact with that result that we just got down here so in order to do that instead of just printing it out we're going to create a variable right at the top a global variable and we'll just call this local item. At the moment, we'll set it to nil when the script first runs. But then when we get a result, we're going to set item to be equal to the result.instance. And then when some input begins, first of all, um, input began gives us two parameters. The input, so the type of the input, some information about it and also something else which tells us if it's been processed elsewhere. So for example, if the user clicks a button, we don't want that to fire anything off here. We just want to be able to click the button. So we don't want it to get anything to get muddled up. So we'll say if it's been processed, then and we'll just return because we're not interested in anything that's being processed elsewhere. But otherwise, if the input dot user input type if that is equal equal, so it's a comparison, two equal signs, to enum, and an enum is sort of like a big list of Roblox values that we can access. Enum dot user input type dot, and we want mouse button one. So that's the left mouse click. Obviously, this is only going to work on PC. We'll have to have some other settings later when we get it ready for mobile. But if that's the case, then then access our item variable. If we've got it, and uh, how about we set the color? So item dot color equals color three dot new, and we'll set it to bright red. So one zero zero. And it's probably a good idea actually to check that the item is a base part because it could possibly be terrain. So we'll check, double check if item colon is a base part. If it is, then we'll set the color. So now when we click play, we should be able to load in just the same as before. We won't get these print statements anymore when we're moving the camera around. But if I click on the grass here, we should turn it, there we go. We've got a bright red piece of grass. And if I click a bit of my body parts, I can start to turn myself red. I can start to turn some of these attacking mobs red, if I can get my aim on it right. And we can set the path red and so on. And this tower, oh, I don't think I can set the tower because it's a union. Turn that on. There we go, we've got a red tower. We can set the base plate red. We can set all these leaves red. And there we go. So we're now interacting with the game world just using our mouse and this is going to be very useful going forwards for our item placement system or our tower placement system so join us for the next episode when we can start placing down our towers but until then thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next episode goodbye